Hello and welcome to another modeling video. This is Alan from the Makoda Man at YouTube with a, another 3D printer video. Today, everything you need to know, set up, review, and how to operate the new Anycubic Mono X 6K. For the best price in Australia, purchased from Anycubic official eBay page for just short of $400. US alternative around the $250 mark, significantly cheaper and a third of the price from the original generation four years ago. It arrived well packed in two days. This video will be comparing the new machine with the old original Mono X from the 2020s and suitability as a replacement. First, many standards and components are compatible. The bed and tank, same dimensions. Other components improved and compact, such as resin clearance on the bed and a pattern etched into the face for improved adhesion and cleanup. The resin vats or tanks were exactly the same, including threads and thumb screws, worth retaining from previous models. Not a fan of the new UV cover. It is lighter, flimsier, has a cool blue color, and a cutout in the rear for any sort of tank heater. Would rather retain the old cover, but for reduction in price, happy to keep it as is. With shorter rails, you have a shorter printer with the same printing capacity. With a solid reliable Z-axis screw and the stepper motor inside the body, the bottom box is a lighter material utilizing a lot more plastic than steel. Lighter aluminium with the same vents placement of fans and vertical standing motherboard and components to prevent drenching in resin if a vat leak was to occur. Functions I did not know about until I dismantled the old Mono X. A thickish screen protector and instructions were included. Easy enough to install with a cleanup, removal of the scratch cover, peel back the adhesion strip and apply and flatten with the scraper. No need to fear if you have the slightest amount of creases or bubbles. For ease and saver money I used glad wrap in past to protect my former printers and it's had no impact on print quality. I like this can be reusable by peeling back and picking or scraping resin off and reapplying without tearing. Forward my models had power supply, motherboard and touchscreen issues, all of them which are new, with thicker, stronger ribbon cable and more parts available. Whole host of tools and PPE all needed for a print and assembly like the Allen keys. Pre-format thumb drive with drivers already installed and software. Lastly, a paper copy of the instructions, multiple language and digital versions also on the thumb drive. All easy to follow. Quick view of the stats. We've got a build volume of 25, 20, 12 centimeters. Same as Mono X. The big difference is more than double resolution, which is deeper and much sharper detail. Moving to setup, a very rapid and easy process. Plugging in the power supply and powering the printer, we are met with a menu of three options. Selecting tools and move Z-axis. Move the Z-axis 3250mm up by pressing the 10mm increments and choosing up three to five times. Place the calibration paper onto the screen. It's about 0.2mm. With the provided Allen key, loosen the four hex nuts either side of the bed adjustable bracket. Make sure the knuckle is very loose and fluid. Mount the bed bracket onto the Z axis screw slot and attach the thumb screw through the threaded hole. Pressing the home button, the bed is going to make its way all the way to the screen. The bed is leveled by applying light pressure with your fingers on the bed to the screen with the paper sandwiched in between and tightening the hex bolts into the bed's bracket. It is important to remain a uniform pressure and to keep the bolts nice and tight. If pressing home does not result in the bed touching the screen, you may need to manually adjust it by the millimeter or less. 
content with your bed level and z-axis position you can zero the home position pressing the zero button and confirming doing this correctly will result in a fine gap between the screen and tank and the bed allowing a little bit of resin to be sandwiched and cured failure in doing this step properly can result in the bed being slammed into the screen damaging the printer or prints not sticking to the bed next step is going to tools and the detection setting we want to check that the screen masking and uv array is working correctly going through the three options you want to choose the three masks of an entire screen and partial screen 10 seconds and playing and exposure top left is uv fully on bottom left is fully masked the right option is the outer edges masked exposing the center i use this to test if a screen is working correctly or not as a yardstick resin forms its best detail when most viscous which also results in superior bed adhesion this is done from temperature control i choose to add a heat belt around the tank heating cabinet or a room heater also suffice the FEP tank is pretty set up and ready for installation but honest mistakes and beginner errors can occur so let's talk about changing the film first clean tank and alcohol and flip upside down using provided allen keys remove all the hex bolts around the frame remove the frame out of the tank and flip on the other side just like the previous side remove all the hex bolts around the frame these ones will be shorter keep note of the countersink holes and sides of the frame for reassembly open and remove old film for larger printers pfe films are less locally readily available and quick ship very expensive it is ideal to pre-order and stock a few at any time they'll be sandwiched between two protective layers that will need to be removed sandwich the new sheet again taking note of where the countersink holes are the rest of the steps will be in reverse of the disassembly it is important to maintain high tension when replacing the bolts start at the outer corners complete opposite from each other in a star like pattern first loose then tightening at the end the same mechanical approach of even pressure as if you're replacing a car tire or a motor block you will need to poke holes through the pfe film via the allen key through the threaded hole it can be quite daunting but the only way to get a tight thread through optional you can cut the excess film around the frame for a neater appearance also easier to pour resin out of the vat back into funnels or bottles turn around and pop it back into the tank with correct assembly everything should be flush and flat same method apply all the hex bolts in a star formation starting at the far corners and tightening for maximum tension the more bolts you put in the more you'll start to see the film tighten if done correctly you'll be able to hit the skin like a drum for film longevity i find scraping or prying pancaked resin to the pfe film can result in tears and scratches draining and applying pressure in reverse makes it pop out easily back to the screen protector i find it thick enough that i'm able to dog tag and peel back a little bit and scrape off any exposed resin on the screen from a hole in the pfe film during the tests i struck a hole into the film via a small bit of support or debris flying in the tank without my knowledge leveling the bed forced the debris through the screen making a hole and almighty crunch sound i was very lucky not to have lost the screen i'm in the habit now of filtering the resin and inspecting the tank covered in more detail in the next session moving supported models around around the g-code it's important to re-zero it on the platform when slicing with the new anycubic software finally or during setup place the tank on top of the screen and finger tight attach the thumb screws to the base of the printer i'll be using jo or sunlu 
standard UV resin for the rest of the video with a slightly longer exposure time than factory settings. Back to the review and first test with a freshly bought unopened bottle shaken thoroughly and added to the tank preheated to a toasty 35 degrees over half an hour with the factory firmware and two test files the AnyCubic Cube was loaded without any adjustments. A feat I failed in the past and was unable to achieve with the previous original Mono X. Don't forget appropriate PPE and rubber gloves, another consumable you should pre-buy in bulk. The bed is wiped down, model pried off with provided scraper, and bed surface cleaned with alcohol and allowed 10-15 to 15 minutes to dry before another print. I did not opt in for the wash and cure station and used dedentured alcohol or methylated spirits to clean and natural sunlight over one day to cure. The cube was crisp, no layer lines, pancaking, warpage or breakages. Very successful and worked straight out of the box. Once the bed is dry, the vat is mixed and checked for debris. The second test covers adhesion and bed level, overhangs, detail, textures and thin frail components or supports. All eight components were uniformed and crisp. Very successful. Well, for working machine, we can start looking at the software and what's loaded onto the thumb drive. First, the digital copy of the instructions are included in plus multiple languages and some of the maintenance aspects in much greater detail. The USB stick makes things easy as it's a pre-formatted FAT32 with low gigabyte storage that is easily read and understood by the printer. Previous sliced PWMX from older slices and models of the Mono X is not compatible with the 6K. Sad as I already had a ton of pre-sliced files that I cannot recycle and found no information online if it was possible to do so or not. I loaded the early version of the slicer. I know Lychee and other third party slicers are very popular and have read compatibility issues with the exporting and wish to avoid all that and go for the indigenous option. The setup wizard was incredibly straightforward. Select the printer included. If you have more than one you can go back and toggle between the two. Then a tutorial runs through showing you a model and the various tools that are useful and process of slicing sliced viewer. One part for our first bed and favorite test piece of the channel 72nd Hz post war version will be our demonstration example. First the shell or hollow tool, no infill, anywhere between 1.2 to 2 mil thick wall. The right side slider can remove step layers to view the inside. If the hollow space is large enough, punch a hole in the bottom and maybe a small one in the top for air to drain resin. Followed by the rotate tool, the Y and Z axis will be slightly adjusted not to be flat with the surface. This moves the print along the pixels and prevents large objects being torn off the supports. The move tool to lift off the bed by 5mm. If your model has a large flat surface, it's not ideal to leave it on the bed as it's likely not to be registered at the zero layer and can potentially fail or pancake into the vat. Throwing in some values, I've tried the auto supports and was pretty pleased. Tree supports is very new to me and more efficient, quicker and wastes less material. In further options you can edit every aspect of the supports from light to heavy and manually support or manually adjust by removing and adding these little balls. Downside, no indication of the lowest point and poor indication of what is not covered. Good aspect, the spheres do not obstruct your view of placing supports. Overall, huge improvement from the original slicer. Finally, you can save your progress on an individual model, turning it into an STL, which you can edit later. Uh, this package is practically a model editor. 
or slice ready for printing. I advise working on each individual part and saving it as an STL file pre-hollowed, scaled and supported, then adding it all to the bed later and slicing it. Sadly, the earliest version of this software has quite a few issues and seem to have crashed on me repetitively when I've overburdened the bed with multiple files to slice or edit at the same time. Using an update or downloading the latest version off the Anycubic website gave me a updated and newer version that gave me no issues, was a lot kinder on my RAM and memory and was very easy to slice and had no crashes or errors. I was able to fill the bed with many type of models and various different shapes and subject matters that I'm very likely to print as well as you guys who are interested in most likely wargaming and components. These are the settings I'll be using since I'll be doing a lot more larger prints or filling the bed. I've increased the exposure time and quite a bit of extra time for the original base layers. It will shorten the life of the screen, but I will have a much larger yield of successful prints as failed prints also shorten the life. A ratio I find very acceptable. With the first collection of models and parts sliced into a G-code with updated settings and each part is zeroed on the bed taking care before slicing, bed cleaned, VAT checked, resin heated as per previous steps, we were rewarded with a very successful print that is all gently pried off the bed, washed in alcohol which I do filter and reclaim and left outside to naturally cure under the sun's UV. When sliced the software also calculates how many grams of materials you've used from milliliters in the tank and the cost of resin by inputting the price. Impressively the resin I had on these scales matched the estimate. Makes quoting very easy for commissions and sales. With multiple prints of this same tank, the standard definition and high definition of the Spark Maker and Mono X still had some ridges which was solvable through filler primer or sanding. This piece is immediately ready for painting and is smooth via the raw resin itself. As per demonstration, I'll be putting some panel line wash against the grain of the z-axis and nothing seeps in, completely smooth. No overhang, warpage or distortion of the tracks and wheels as well. Incredibly impressive that the technology could improve this much. More importantly, this Space Marine facial and mechanical detail is very defined and crisp. Suitable for hand painting. Another returning favourite is the 50mm Tachikoma model and how easy the combined process medium is to work with. First, the fantastic tree support is a lot thinner and strategically placed where it's far away from surfaces and not intermingling with meshes and fusing in inappropriate places. The attachment points are very fine and it snaps off or cuts with a great amount of ease leaving a lot less marks and nubs, pock marks behind. Overall a lot easier to work with. The holes in the raft use half of the material as well. Painting the surface I went immediately to a base coat ignoring primer, filler or any other preparation steps. Airbrushing lacquer solvent based hobby paints, especially metallic which is incredibly unforgiving in its reflection. Followed by hand painting and a sludge wash. I would not have spent more than 40 minutes from the removal of the first support to applying the final clear coat, obviously with breaks to allow chemical drying and curing. For a very quick sloppy build and paint this came out extremely nicely. 
A side note on the third print, the bed was marketed to have a textured surface that was laser etched in. It seems to be wearing off very easily with the prying of the rafts via the scraper, but the more scratches, the easier the adhesion anyway, so I'm not overly fussed that the, the aesthetic is rustic and lived in. The next test will be executing a much larger and heavier model. The full size Rogel Dawn tank from 40k hollowed the walls to the thinnest tolerance of 1.2mm with holes at the top and bottom to drain resin and allow air to siphon in. Turned out to be a lot lighter than expected, yet not too thin that I can damage it through removing the supports or crushing breaking of my finger. Immediately following up with a fourth print of the turrets. Natural sunlight curing assured that it was rigid enough not to be brittle, though I don't think it would survive the drop. For the quickest turnaround for tabletop, hit it with filler primer lacquer car paint, cheap enamel green, all aerosol and sufficient enough. For definition, a bit of highlighter for lighter green via airbrush, camouflage pattern, hand painted finer details and a total sludge wash. With paint there is no visual faults or flaws in this build. Post print turnover is a couple of hours. Total cost would have been one tenth or less of the original retail of $120. And I had a lot of fun making this. A simple base coat, hand painted detail and sludge wash will be enough. Throughout the first week in possession of this new printer, I kept pushing different prints to get familiar with the new slicing and operations and to push it outside of the honeymoon period and to see if there's any quality issues or early breakdowns. Out of 10 of the total prints, only one was a partial failure due to my own fault. Mentioned in the bed vat section of this video, the models that are not pancaked are completely salvageable. I continued to make models by commission for more closer friends and personal use in shorts content and have not counted a single issue or any note of concern across a whole range of conditions and weather. The performance and fantastic results has been very consistent with each successful print. With the steps followed in this video and extra tips from my experiences with it, continued commission printing and owning a third resin printer. The process is stress-free and works in my business model of printing for profit and a business. Over the 50 hours running, I've produced this chart to track the life of this printer, which will be reviewed during the end of life review at a much later date. And at approximately 5% of the life of the screen, I have definitely got my money's worth in prints produced compared to original retail price if I got resin cast or injection molded alternatives or the 20% mark where it will break even. I do always stress if this is your first time to test a whole range of types and brands of resin and settle with what has the best results and adhesion. You'll have also noticed the thumb screws and UV shield is covered in plastic, which is a tip provided by Uncle Les. You get a lot of sticky residue on your gloves, which transfer to other surfaces, which will result in resin going on your bare hands at a later date and looking tacky. This concludes my instructional tutorial and review of the Anycubic Mono X 6K. I completely and thoroughly endorse and highly recommend the purchase of this machine to anyone who takes their hobby very seriously, wish to produce a large amount of wargaming miniatures or making a business. My experience has been genuine joy and low stress ordeal. Very pleased and love the sample models. Thank you very much for watching and as always until next time stay tuned for further content and don't forget to check out the description section down below for all the links and reference material, social media links and other projects that I'm working on. 
This video was extremely labor intensive and time consuming to get all the shots, tests and edited it up. If you do feel inclined, I would not mind a comment and a like. Thank you very much for that in advance. More importantly, more than happy to answer any questions and address concerns. Catch you later and see ya.